All right, January 22nd, 2018. Uh, this is part three of the how to set up a Raspberry Pi to monitor a greenhouse video series. Uh, this is also for cabins, cottages, pretty much any application you want to use it for. Uh, you can adapt it to your application. Uh, but basically, uh, we're going through how to set up a uh, Raspberry Pi from scratch, um, to log data to a database, to use one wire sensors, to use an Adafruit Python DHT22, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is the next section. You've gotten your image downloaded. Uh, I also want to make a quick update correction here. Uh, one sec. Uh, the image that I said in the last video to download is the wrong one, the one you want. Uh, to match exactly this image. Uh, you probably could use one of the newer images, but if you want to just match this image exactly so you can follow instructions exactly, um, I would recommend you download this version is 1.10.2017. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you download the image, you extract the archive, install it as we discussed in a previous video with uh, Win32. I'll throw a quick screenshot of that in here. And, uh, and then we'll get on with the rest of this. So now we're on to the next section. You've installed your SD card into your Pi. You've hooked up your monitor, mouse, and keyboard, which you absolutely need to do for your first session at least. Um, you'll notice I do everything on the rest of this headless through SSH or secure shell uh, using a program called Putty. I find that's much easier. I don't like having to set up a whole monitor and keyboard and mouse and workstation to use the Pi. So I basically just, when I set up a Pi, if I write a new image to it, I just hook it up to the keyboard, mouse, monitor, and network, plug in your ethernet cable. And then uh, I bring it up and I set up the configuration like so. So uh, here's what you're gonna do. <coughs> uh, plug them in, plug in the power, it'll boot up, you'll see the monitor come up, it'll boot up into the Raspberry Pi desktop. <coughs> Excuse me. In that desktop you'll go uh, uh, up top or down on the bottom, uh, either up top or down on the bottom. There's basically a start menu just like Windows. You go start, you go to, I think it's system and terminal. you're looking for the terminal program. Uh, it might be under some other menu. I'm pretty sure it's system and terminal. So you click on terminal, that'll open a little terminal window. It looks very much like uh, this. And then you'll go and type in these commands. Uh, these here, sudo su raspi config. Okay, then uh, That'll load a menu that looks uh, like you'll go in and, and make a few changes. Uh, the link for this um, for this how to set how to set up the basics on your Pi and enable SSH, which is necessary in order order to log in through SS, SSH. Um, I'll put the link in the description for that as well. Um, sorry for the distraction there. Uh, so anyway, you go sudo su and then enter and then raspi dash config and enter. Uh, you go in and you'll, you'll uh, first choose update. Um, update. And uh, you'll update the tool to the latest version. Um, and then, sorry. <laughs> and then you go in advanced options, you'll expand the root file system. Then you go under interfacing options and enable SSH. That's critical in order to do headless operation from here out. Uh, you should definitely should change the locale uh, to fit your country and time zone and all that. Uh, that's basically just kind of a walkthrough men menu like you would have in Windows or any other operating system. And then uh, you should change the default password. And just like they say in here, don't be lazy, just do it. If you don't do it, that means anyone else can log into your Pi anytime they want really easily and if they're a hacker and they have malicious intent they could mess up all your work 
So change your password, write your password down somewhere if you have to. Uh, if you don't, then don't. Um, just if you lose it, you lose it. Uh, so um, once you've gone through that, <coughs> um, it'll ask you if you want to reboot. You say yes, it'll reboot. And that brings us on to the next section. Um, if you're working from the Raspberry Pi itself, uh, assume anything you would do from PuTTY, like I'm doing, would be done through Terminal on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so that said, I'm going to teach you how to use uh, the secure shell briefly. Um, I will put the link to the download for PuTTY in the description of this video as well. Um, as well as Angry IP Scanner, I will put that in there. Uh, you'll find this is a very useful tool for seeing what's on your network. Um, if you have not set a static IP on your Pi, and I don't I haven't showed you how to do that yet, uh, it may come up with an address that you won't know what the address is. And so this is an easy way to find that address. Uh, if you go to your network, you can scan the whole network. Um, I think Angry IP automatically detects what network you're on. So basically, you, you don't really have to change any of these numbers. I think by default, it's set to 255 here. I always set it to 50 because I only assign IP addresses below 50 on this network. So I know that they'll be between 0 and 50, and it's less addresses to scan. Anyway, that said, um, you come back and use the Angry IP scanner, and you run a scan. We'll discard. I'll show you here real quick how this works, because <coughs> you need to find this out before you'll be able to log in through Secure Shell or SSH, as it's called. Um, you'll need to know what the IP address is of the Pi you're trying to get to. So this program will take a, a minute or two, and it'll go through and scan all the IP addresses you've set within the range for it to search and any IP addresses that are live, including Raspberry Pi, will show up and then you'll be able to figure out exactly where your Raspberry Pi is. Also after you uh, make those update changes we talked about in the beginning of this video, it will change uh, how the Pi shows up on the network and you'll see it's Raspberry Pi dot and then whatever your local uh, domain name is. So here, here's my Pi at 192.168.254.30 Okay, so now that I know that, I know where to look for the Pi in order to log in with PuTTY. So you go to your Windows desktop or wherever you have PuTTY, double click on PuTTY and it'll load. <coughs> and I have saves configurations here in mine, but you can just enter this stuff manually. Okay, so uh, we just found the IP address here in Angry IP Scanner, it's the Raspberry Pi. And we type that IP address in here, we leave the default port at 22. I think this defaults to SSH, but if not, definitely tick SSH because that's what you want. And then you can save this session. Uh, you can name it whatever you want right here and then save it. Okay. And that way, next time you go to use it, you can just load this session and open it. It makes it much easier. All right. So now we'll go ahead and open it. You'll notice it's asking uh, about a. Uh, an exchange key, an RSA2 key fingerprint, just say yes. All right, and now the default username and password for Raspberry Pi is Pi and Raspberry. Uh, like I said, we'll want to change that. Uh, so the first thing that we'll do here is Raspi config, actually, it's sudo su to get super user privileges, and then we'll go raspi config. All right, now change user password. So if you haven't done this yet, I'm going to change this password. Make sure you enter it twice to confirm. Now the password has been changed. Click OK or hit Enter. <clears throat> takes you back. If you haven't expanded your file system, you should do that. Um, let's see, boot options. Uh, I would just leave that as default. Uh, you want desktop. Uh, go back. Uh, by the way, tab gets you around the select and finish options and back to the menu. And up and down arrows take you up and down on selection here, in case you're wondering how to navigate those. 
Uh, let's see. Internalization. Time zone. You should change your time zone if you have not yet. Um, and change your Wi-Fi country if you plan to use Wi-Fi so that it's set to US. Um, I'm not going to mess with any of that right now. We're just trying to get basic operations set up here. Um, if you want to use a camera, you can enable it. Uh, overclocking, I wouldn't overclock anything without uh, without seeing how safe that is. Uh, I think I have mine overclocked actually, but um, but that's a whole other story. <coughs> um, configure advanced options. One thing I do recommend doing is setting the host name. Um, it will tell you all the parameters that you have to meet uh, in the host name. Uh, we'll call this uh, trainer. And then you'll notice when you look for it on the network uh, next time, you'll see that it's... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do a couple of things. You'll see that it's uh, not Raspberry Pi.netgear anymore, but it'll be trainer.netgear uh, or whatever the domain name is. Um, let's see. Uh, SSH, you definitely want to enable SSH. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Uh, let's see. You're going to need... If you want to use VNC later on... Well, we won't get into VNC right now. Uh, suffice to say, if you want to use VNC, enable it. If you don't, don't. Uh, SPI, it's not a bad idea to enable serial programmable interface. Yes. Um, then I squared C. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would enable audio. Well, audio is enabled. Serial, you could or could not. You don't really need to. One wire, you definitely need to because that's what the sensors are uh, for. Um, I think that's it. That's what the sensors are for the... Uh, Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, for the uh, thermal sensors, the one wire sensors are one wire, obviously. Um, sorry, <coughs> lost my train of thought for a moment there. Uh, all right, so when that's all set, go down and use tab again to get down to the finish. Hit enter, and it'll ask you if you want to reboot. You say yes. You'll notice that your connection gets severed if you're in via SSH. And if you're on the desktop, you'll see it go into a reboot. Um, it'll take a minute to reboot. Uh, I'm actually doing this for. I'm actually doing this image on a, on a Raspberry Pi too, so this is a little slower than the three. Um, I didn't have a spare three to do this trainer course with, so I, uh, I'm using a two. Uh, it basically works pretty much all the same. Uh, so it's rebooting right now. We'll give it uh, uh, like 60 seconds. Okay, so we've rebooted. You log back in with PuTTY or uh, go back to Terminal if you're using the Raspberry Pi right from the desktop. Um, and our next thing is to update. So uh, you're going to use sudo whenever you want to run a uh, administrative command. So you'll be sudo apt get update. And you'll notice it's getting packages. So basically what it's doing right now is updating um, the image that it'll actually take updates from. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, you can type sudo apt-get upgrade. Uh, just a little tip: uh, if you want to, if you want to re recall previous commands you can use the up key and you can navigate between previous commands with the up and down key 
so I, I can go back through the different commands. Uh, so sudo apt get upgrade, and so now it'll download everything it needs to update to the latest. It'll ask you if you actually uh, want to do this. Type yes or Y actually. And it tells you how much more space will be used. Okay, so uh, finally, after a long time of waiting, your updates have finished. Uh, sorry for the smaller screen here. Uh, I was doing a few other things uh, while this was updating. It takes quite a while, uh, hour, hour and a half, two, somewhere in there. Might be faster on your internet connection, certainly faster on a Pi 3. Uh, anyway, uh, so we've done apt get update, apt get upgrade, and uh, it's a good idea at this point to do a reboot. Uh, if you're on the desktop, you can do just a uh, start shutdown, like from the uh, the start menu, like you would in Windows or any other operating system. Uh, if you're on command line through SSH, you can do sudo reboot now. <laughs> And you'll see that the server unexpectedly closed connection. Uh, if you're on a Pi 3, you should have it, the network connection back in about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. If you're on a Pi 2, it'll take about a minute. So we'll let that reboot run, and we'll pick it up on the other side. Okay, we've rebooted. Let me just make sure my volume is up. Okay. Uh, so we've rebooted. Uh, we're back up now. Uh, so if you're using PuTTY, you just right-click, go down to Restart Session. It'll prompt you for a username and password, as always. All right. Uh, now we want to confirm that we enabled one wire. So real quick, we'll go CD, Sys, Bus, W1, Devices. Okay. Uh, make that W1, and then we'll list. Uh, yeah, okay, so it looks like one wire is enabled. At this point, we don't have any hardware connected, so uh, we won't uh, we won't go into that right now. Um, what other thing here? Um, all right, so I think we're going to make this the end of part three. Uh, just to review, we... Uh, put the card in the Raspberry Pi, connected the mouse and monitor and keyboard. Uh, we came up and we did some updates with Raspi config uh, to, to set it up so we can get in through SSH. We changed our default password. We expanded the file system and we enabled a number of interfaces and we set our time zone. Uh, then we rebooted <coughs> and then um, we came back up and we were in apt get update and after apt get update ran we did apt get upgrade and we updated the Pi to the latest version <coughs> um, we just checked to make sure that uh, when we were in the Raspi config menu we did enable one wire uh, by going to the one wires uh, main directory and just listing the contents and you can see that uh, it's being monitored so that's that for now and that's the end of part three uh, next time we will pick it up with installing Apache web server. Um, so please come back uh, for that episode if, uh, if you found this interesting or helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe below uh, if you like this video or like this sort of content. And if this helps you, I would love to hear some comments and or questions from anyone in case I missed anything as well. Uh, so thanks again for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. This is the end of part three. We'll see you in part four.